Today's video is all about Shimano Di2 synchro shifting on a road bike. What it is, what you'll need, how to configure it, and how to enable it. So synchro shifting on road is not a new thing. It's been around for a few years now. However, if you're upgrading to a Di2 bike, or you're switching to a group set that supports something similar under a different name, this is what it's all about. First up, the Shimano implementation of Synchro comes in three different modes. There's manual mode, which is shifting as you've always known it. The rider initiates the shift, the bike shifts, either front or back. Then there's S1 mode, known as semi-synchro. In that mode, when the rider initiates a front chainring change, either up or down, the rear automatically compensates at the back. Shimano say this is to give the rider an optimal gear transition. And lastly, there's S2, or full synchro, where you can change from your lowest to highest gear ratios with just one up button and one down button, and the system takes care of what gear and what chainring you need to be in. Now, full synchro isn't as scary as what you might think. You can always initiate a front chainring change yourself, but full synchro, in short, it's all the way up with one finger and all the way down with the other. So they're the three modes in a nutshell. Uh, also note, synchro isn't multi-shift. Multi-shift is when you press and hold and the cassette steps down or steps up with multiple changes with one single hold and press. And the front derailleur will also auto trim in any of these modes. So what you'll need to support synchro shifting in DI2, well, pretty much any recent DI2 road group set does support this, but you will need a battery that is compatible, such as the BT DN110 or the DN100 external battery. Now, the reason for that is that Shimano have put a newer memory chip that can handle the processing and power required to deal with multiple shift patterns and customizations that synchro shifting brings. And you'll also need to make sure your firmware is updated. Today, I won't cover the advanced options for the user configuration for full synchro or semi-synchro, but if you're into that level of detail, you can dive into those options with the Windows or mobile eTube app, where with Synchro 2, you can set your shift point, and Synchro 1, the semi-synchro option, you can set how many jumps your rear cassette does when you do a front change. To enable or disable synchro shifting on a Di2 road bike, or more accurately switch between the three modes, there are two methods that I know of. First of all, double-clicking the button on junction port A, We'll cycle through M, S1, and S2, and then back to M. And if you have the wireless module installed for your Di2 road bike and a compatible Garmin Edge head unit, you can configure the shift mode from within the sensor settings. So if you have a Di2 bike and you're not quite sure what shifting mode that you're in, it's likely you're in M or manual mode. If you're riding along and magic is happening on the front or the back with your normal changes, it's likely you're in S1 or S2. Another option is to press two buttons on one shifter at the same time and watch the junction A light flashing pattern. First of all, it'll give you a battery level indication. And then after that, if you have a synchro enabled system, it'll give you red and green solid for two seconds, indicating you're in manual mode. If red and green then flash twice, it's in S1 or semi-synchro mode. And if red and green flash three times, that's for S2. You're in full synchro. If you have the Di2 wireless module installed and paired to a compatible Garmin Edge, you can configure a field on screen to show the shift mode, and it will also prompt you if the shift mode changes. And a bonus round is if you're using one of those on any of your bikes, it will show you the shift mode on the screen. So there's a quick overview on all the details of the Shimano Di2 synchro shifting on a road bike. Now I've recently upgraded the battery on my giant TCR rim brake bike to support this. So let's jump down to the Llama Lab and see these different modes in action. Okay, I've put the giant TCR bike up on the bike stand here, so it's a little easier to see what's going on when I'm changing gears here and what's taking place down the back. Now, the cool part about the synchro shifting setup is that it's there by default. S1, S2, and M are already pre-configured. Ideally, you do want to tell the system what chainring sizes you have and what cassette you're running on the back to optimize the S2 experience. But for today, I'm just going to run through the defaults of what we have here after installing the new battery. Starting off with M mode or manual mode, and it's shifting as you know it. Turning the cranks, we go down the cassette, we go up the cassette, and then we make a front chain ring change. All the way back up. And that's shifting as you know it, nothing special at all. It's effectively disabled or manual mode as they call it. Okay, over to S1, double clicking, double flash indicating we're in S1. So S1 mode, 
changing down in the back. Nothing changes with the rear change, but as soon as we do a front change, you'll see it correct too on the back. Small to big on the front. You can see by default there it moves two up. And from big to small, two down on the back. Again, a little further down the cassette, we go from small to big, it's gonna jump up the back cogs. We go up one more on the back. And then we go from big chain ring to small. Again, two more down on the back. S1, semi-synchro. Now onto the really interesting one, S2 or full synchro mode. We'll get the bike into the easiest gear all the way at the top. Double click. One, two, three. We are in full synchro mode. And this is where the fun starts. We can effectively forget the left lever for changing to the big or the small, although you can still do that. So full synchro, let's have a look at how this operates. So we'll step down through the cassette. So you can see right there, as soon as I hit that change point, the front chain ring changed automatically, stepped up on the back and kept those gear ratios as smooth as possible. Well, as smooth as the default configuration is, and that's what you can change. Let's go all the way down. There we go, 53.11. And all the way back up. And there we have it. You can see on the way back up, the front ring changed as well. If you have the DI2 wireless module installed on your bike and paired to a Garmin head unit, it will warn you if the next change will do a double shift, both at the front and the back. So you won't be caught out with a chain ring change at the front if you're under full load. Now, before I forget, I'll put this back into S1 mode. Good to go. So that was the three modes in action there in the Llama Lab. For me, all my bikes are configured for S1 mode or semi-synchro because that's the way I ride my bike anyway. If it's a mechanically geared bike, I will switch the front chain ring, this hand, and then click two down on the back. Or if I'm going big to low, I'll switch the other way. I'll always do that small compensation anyway. S1 does it for me. I've also seen full synchro mode used in very interesting ways for hand cyclists and paracyclists. So it's pretty cool. They can use off the shelf stuff to customize what they need. All right, we'll leave it there for today. Thanks for watching this one. Hopefully you've learned something. I definitely have digging into all of this. And as always, to support this channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and there's a join button there too.